untamed strength. It was 70 degrees and beautiful yesterday. Today it's rainy and gross. And it's like a weird humid. I don't really mind the cold. I'd rather train in the heat. It's just humid that kind of gets me wrong. You don't know what to wear. I got some like fucking thick compression on, but then shorts and then a hoodie, but then I'm sweaty. But I don't want to take the hoodie off because then I'll be cold. Frequencies up, squatting three times a week. I'm trying to handle the volume I can with my back, but mostly uh, just focusing on the intensity and getting better. Diet's going well, hit 206.5 pounds. Follow me, Salam Mike, 2Ks, doing updates once a week. We're on the cut. Aesthetics first, bros. You feel me? Trying to get shredded, and then we'll focus back on, on the strength. Feeling all right. Squats feel all right. How did you pull the burrito? It's Tuesday. My name's Mike. This is my YouTube channel. This guy asked, what numbers do I have to hit to be able to compete in a powerlifting competition? Come on, man. For those that are new, welcome. But for those that are old and done been here a while, we all know it's about progress. So I get this question way too common. Mike, I'm such and such age. I lift such and such. I weigh such and such. I've been training this long. Is that good? It's only good if we focus on progress and we do progress week to week, month to month, year to year. If we stay in the game and we're having fun and taking, I said this on tweeters, Sometimes I get deep on tweeters. Sound on Mike, 2K is following me. But if you're focusing only on building muscle and strength in the gym, you're missing out on 90% of what we should be focusing on. And that, what I meant by that, some people seem confused, but it's about the discipline, it's about the consistency, it's about learning about yourself, it's about pushing yourself, it's about building community, it's about building friends, and it's about progress. So, to get to your question, there is no standard lift that you need to hit or number you need to hit to compete. All you need to be able to do is follow the directions of a meet, read up on them. There's plenty of videos on YouTube or go to the federation you want to compete in and look at their rules and do the list to the standard of that competition. That's all there is. So you're going to have to be able to hit depth on your squat. You're going to have to be able to pause the bench. You're going to be able to have to uh, deadlift the bar, lock it out and control the bar on the way down. Basically there are commands and that depends on federation equipment rules, singlet, etc. But there's no standard or no elite and don't wait for it. If you want to compete, go compete. Everyone says, well, once I squat 600, then I'll maybe compete. Just go compete, get your feet wet, see if you even like it or not. That's all there is to it, fam. Some guy asked what happened to Eric Spoto. Eric Spoto, once king of the bench press, I believe he bench pressed 722 pounds uh, and held the world record for Raw world record for maybe three, four, five years or so. Uh, I know Eric pretty well. I know, one, he got a little beat up. I think it was his shoulder or his tricep. Two, I know speaking to him uh, and interviewing him in the past that uh, powerlifting something a little bit like me where he just kind of fell upon it. He was benching in the gym and he was strong and he liked to lift weights and people were like, hey man, like you're really strong, unlike me, uh, but you are really close to like some real records, like you're legitimate, why don't you go do it? And then he chased that down rather than some people, uh, which is not right or wrong, but some people now get into it to find their competition again because they stopped playing college or high school sports or to be competitive or to build community. He just already liked lifting weights and so then he kind of hopped into that competition broke the record I think he's just a little beat up but I think he still trains um, I don't know if he has an idea for a comeback or not I haven't spoken to him too recently I saw him at an Olympia maybe two years ago or so uh, said what's up but uh, for a lot of people you know me myself included I never got into powerlifting to compete to chase world records some people just like to lift weights I like my friends I like making content I like uh, building my knowledge and experience as a coach over the years to improve myself and to prove others uh, to progress in strength and conditioning for sport or powerlifting. But uh, I never threw my hat in and said, I'm gonna be a power lifter. It's never something that's resonated with me. Uh, if it resonates with you, power to you. I do like it as a sport. It's just not you know, what I uh, dream I do the rest of my life. I will compete off and on for the rest of my life, but it's not. I'm not a power lifter at the core. I, I like lifting weights, I like the three lifts, I like strength and conditioning, and I like coaching people in power lifting because I see the satisfaction they get from hitting PRs on the platform or, or, or new totals. But uh, I think, you know, without putting words in Spoto's mouth, he might come from a similar standpoint than myself where uh, he just likes to lift weights, likes to smash them out. So I'm sure he's still benching 405 for 30 or whatever the hell he does down in Nevada. You have this video series called Fix My Form. Yeah. And no one knows how to fix or uh, send it in right. Yeah, no one knows how to send anything in. Right. Look, folks, 
I'm trying to fix your form. We want everybody to be a little bit more efficient in the gym. So what we're doing is we need as high quality as you can, 1080 plus, filmed landscape. That's this way. Not, no, yes. Red X, green check. That's the only way people learn nowadays. Landscape, straight from the side or straight on, preferably both, 70% of your one rep max. So take your one rep max, multiply it by 0.7, and put that number on the barbell and lift it three times. Anything else we need? Email to askmikke at gmail.com. Now, all we're doing is taking some of those videos, we have thousands, we're taking those videos and we're putting them in the YouTube video. You're not gonna get a response, I'm sorry. I get enough emails to handle every morning by itself, so I'm not gonna respond to anybody or everybody. But what we will do, if you subscribe here, turn on notifications, you won't miss a video and you may be featured in the YouTube video where I voice over and I coach you. Now, rewind that 30 seconds and watch it again. And again. This guy asks, what do you believe is the world record for the natty deadlift? I don't know. Uh, you can look that up. You can look that up, bro. It's, not, it's not what I believe. It's what is. It is what is. It is what it is, boy. But like Brian Shaw's not going to be in there. No. So if you're going to say the natural best deadlift ever, you're going to have to go by a natural federation. And you guys can look back. The videos did pretty well uh, about tested versus untested versus drug free or not federations, powerlifting and sports. Um, I gave most of my opinions on that. And most of those stand for what I can remember. I said, I say a lot of shit. So who knows? My opinions do change as I think all of us, if we're trying to grow our opinions should change. We should be open. Um, if you go to openpowerlifting.org, I'm not sponsored. I should be. I don't even know what they'd sponsor me with, but I should be. Uh, they have a pretty up-to-date ranking system on powerlifting since about 2011, 12, 13 in that range. So modern era. Uh, they don't go back too far, but when you go back too far, it starts to get complicated because there's uh, different rules in how you lift where a lifter could follow himself. The bar weight never went down like weightlifting. Also, uh, single ply gear and stuff was used or multi ply gear more commonly. But if you go, I think it's power, openpowerlifting.org, don't quote me, uh, but something of that nature. And you can search uh, drug tested, what cl weight class, male or female, master, etc., and they'll rank everything top to bottom. Um, I don't know the number offhand, but my guess would be high 800s. Um, I know Brad Gillingham has pulled around 880, don't quote me. Uh, multiple times in like a USAPL stiff bar. Um, I think the USPA is one of the few federations that now has tested with the deadlift bar. So there might be a bigger number there. Um, but I'd say high 800s. Maybe someone's pulled 900, so don't quote me. Yeah, I would guess high 800s, but uh, that's just off the top of my head. You guys can go look and check it out. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, a 900 pound pull in powerlifting standards is very, very rare. I know guys are pulling a thousand frequently in strongman now, but they have a slightly different barbell. They're using straps. They can use multiple belts and sometimes a suit. So that changes the game a little bit too. If you're going powerlifting deadlift versus strongman deadlift, they are technically different sports because the setup's so different. Um, deadlift bar versus stiff bar is slightly different, but less of a difference than that in my opinion. But I'd say high 800s or so would be my guess. Even though there's been a thousand pound squat, Shout out Big Ray Ray, smashing weights. I think he pulled 820. Yeah, it's a high eights. That's all I got, fam. If you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe, smash the thumbs up. Silent Mike, I'm out of here. I'm gonna go sleep, eat. It's a rainy day here in California. Hope you guys have a good one, I'm out.